I'm very pleased to have this opportunity. I'm Hirosuke Shiura from University of Yamanashi in Japan. Before I start, I'd like to thank Koseki Sensei for inviting me to speak in this webinar. Today, I'd like to talk about the function of very unique gene fake 10 and its relation to mammalian evolution. I would like to begin with the introduction of the unique characters of pectin gene. Firstly, pectin is known as one of the paternally expressed imprinted genes. So unlike, unlike, unlike normal gene, this gene is only expressed on the allele inherited from father. Secondly, pectin is a serial specific gene. This means that among mammals, marsupials such as koala and kangaroo and eusarian, including human, have pectin. However, platypus and echidna, which grouped in Montreal, don't have this gene. Sadly, this is the most distinct future. Pectin is a gene derived from LTR retrotransposon or retrovirus. About 20 years ago, we have identified Pectin as a gene showing high homology with Sushi Ichi LTR retrotransposon. After that, we have found that other 10 genes in user and genome also show high homology with the same retro transpose. This means that all of these genes were born from the same retro transpose or virus. Among them, please especially remember another paternally imprinted gene, PEG11. Now it's called RTL1 because this gene will appear in this talk later and play a key component in the discussion part. Well, what kind of function do pectin has in mammalian development? To elucidate it, we have generated pectin knockout mice and reported previously. As shown here, the knockout mice shows severe placental dysplasia and all embryos died before 10.5 embryonic day. Now we are addressing the molecular mechanism of pectin involved in this early placental formation and would like to report it in the near future. This fact indicated that pectin was inserted in a common serial ancestor genome as a letter transposon or letter virus and evolved to a novel gene that is essential for placental development. This suggests that acquisition of pectin contributed to evolution of placenta formation and viviparity in eusarian mammals. However, other pectin's functions and early placenta formation remains obscure because the knockout embryos die in early developmental stage. So what we want to know next is whether pectin has function in only early placenta or is involved in other mammalian developmental system. To address them, now we are generating a series of pectin mutant mice. This slide shows the structural proteins synthesized from pectin messenger RNA. As pectin has two oral acts and maintains protein translation and processing mechanisms unique to the LTR retrotransposon, pectin can synthesize not only ORF1 protein, but also the fusion protein of ORF1 and ORF2. In addition, the aspartic protease in the fusion protein can digest itself and produce several protein fragments. As these properties are highly conserved among serial mammals, we think that all pectin proteins have important, important roles in mammalian development. From the next slide, I would like to introduce the results of the protease mutant study. To generate the mutant strain, we induced the mutation in DSG protease domain from DSG to ASG. As I mentioned earlier, pectin is a paternally expressed gene, so the mask carrying paternally transmitted mutant allele, hereafter called pectin SG or SG mice, were used for phenotypic analysis throughout this study. On Western blotting experiments, we could confirm the loss of protease activity in ASG mice as expected, because as you can see, a pectin self cleavage product was observed only in wild type, but undetectable in the mutant mice. Before the generation of pectin ASG mice, 
We predicted that the mass shows the early embryonic resulting like peritoneal knockout mass. However, as shown here, the mutant embryos and placenta were apparently normal at 12.5 day. Instead, we found that about half of recovered mutant fetus were dead at 18.5 day. And also, cervical mutant fetus showed small size and had small placentas compared to normal mass. <clears throat> so we performed detailed analysis for the gross phenotypes. This panel shows the weight of embryo and, embryo and placenta, and the value of one represents the mean weight of the white type mass. As you can see, the mutant embryos show their growth retardation started around 15.5 days and reached over 20% reduction in terms. While the placental weight reduction was already evident at 12.5 days and persisted to term. This result demonstrates that the DSG protease is essential for placental growth in mid to late gestation, and its inactivation causes placental hyperplasia, which consequently, consequently led to fetal growth retardation and perinatal lethality. Next, to examine morphological abnormality, abnorm abnormalities in the mutant placenta, we perform several histological analyses. And this illustration shows that in the labyrinth layer of placenta, the fetal vasculature is comprised of fetal capillary intercellular cells and surrounding, surrounding three trophoblast cell layers, which constituting fetal maternal interface. So in normal placenta, the intercellular cell and trophoblast layers closely aligned around the fetal capillaries, as shown here. In contrast, in the mutant placenta, this alignment became irregular and their respective locations were separated from each other. Under magnified views, in the ST labyrinth, the fetal and cellular cell nuclei were accumulated in narrow space, and the, and the fetal blood space observed in wild type had become blocked in the mutant. As this structure is essential for gas and nutrient exchange between the fetal and the maternal blood, this result suggests that the abnormal organization of the fetal vasculature causes severe impairment, impairment of fetal maternal exchange. We also assessed placental morphology by H.E. Stenic and found that existing NC Lovelace layer in the dead mutant is deeply stained bright pink by AOG. And the bright pink area contained considerable intercellular cell nuclear debris. This characteristic staining pattern is typically seen in one of the necrotic form of cell death, fibrinoid necrosis. Additionally, we found that the number of leukocyte CD45 positive cells was markedly increased in pectin SC placentas obtained from deceased embryos. We think that this accumulation of leukocyte results from chronic inflammation of fetal vasculature. So this result suggests that severe inflammation was induced in the fetal vasculature of the mutant placenta, which then led to the development of fibrinoid necrosis-like symptoms, ultimately resulting in severe fetal damage and fetal death. Well then, how do pectin exert its protective, protective effect on fetal vasculature in placental labyrinths? As shown here, we found that pectin did not localize in the CP31 positive fetal and cellular cells that were damaged in the mutant, indicating that pectin protein is expressed in the trophoblast cell layers, enclosing fetal capillary. This suggests that the trophoblast cells have some defense mechanism to protect the fetal and cellular cells against non-specific harmful events, and that, and that the protein activity is largely involved within this process. Previously, we have demonstrated that RTL1, which is introduced at the top of this talk, derived from the same neutral virus as pectin, is also essential for the maintenance of the fetal capillaries in the placenta. This, the important thing here is that 
RTN1 is only expressed in, in intercellular cells in contrast to PEG10. This demonstrated, demonstrates that the two retrovirus derived gene, PEG10 and RTN1, function on either side of the fetal maternal interface and act in a cooperative manner so as to maintain a normal fetal vasculature and fetal maternal exchange. At this time, the mechanism remains unknown. However, we speculate its involvement in the immune tolerance of the mother to embryo antigen as one possibility. To conclude my presentation, I'd like to summarize important points. We found that disruption of pectin protease activity results in perinatal result due to severe defect in fetal maternal circulation in the placenta. This and previous neural knockout studies indicated that PEG10 plays a different role in placental development in a stage-dependent manner, placenta formation in the early gestational stage, and maintenance of the fetal capillary network from mid to late gestation. And our results indicated that PEG10 protease activity in tolerable cell layer exert protective effect on the fetal vasculature against non-specific harmful events. Combined with the fact that RTL1 is also essential for the maintenance of the fetal capillaries, it is highly likely that domestication of both PEG10 and RTL1 must have been critical event and exert a driving force in, a, in the evolution of Euclidean BB Paras reproduction system. As PEG10 and RTL1, and the other family gene derived from the same retrovirus are uh, expressed in many tissues other than placenta. We expect that these genes have contrib contribution to the evolution and the acquisition of various other serial specific traits in a cooperative manner. So we think that the elucidation of those, those is very interesting subjects for the future. At last, I, I would like to thank these collaborators and all staff of this webinar. Thank you very much for kind attention. And actually, I have a few questions. Uh, do you have any idea what could be the, the substrates for this protease activity of PEG10? Is there, of course, an autocatalysis could be, but uh, maybe there could be many other substrates potentially for for PEG10. Do you have any idea? Uh, uh, <coughs> can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, uh, I don't have, I don't have the, the evidence, evidence for, for the for that PEG10. PEG10 can, PEG10 can digest, can digest as, a as a protein. So, so but uh, but, uh, uh, uh I think, I think uh, uh, other protein other also, also processed by the But I think, but I that, think that, uh, uh, this function, this function for, for maintenance, maintenance of placenta vasculature is depend on pectin function, but no evidence. Both PEG10 and the PEG11 are uh, maintained in all uh, you should be our animals. Is is my understanding correct? That this is a basically the all the, the placental placental animals. Oh yes, both pig and Okay. 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 I see. Yeah, because I I I just wonder that you know the the morphology or the, the architecture of a placenta is uh, so, you know, diverse, diverse among, even among, you know, the, the mammals. So I'm just wonder the, the differential usage of uh, PEG-10, PEG-11 among species. This could potentially could be uh, somehow contribute to, to give uh, such heterogeneity of a placenta. I think, I think that, 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 that 
in other, other, other species, other species. Yeah. Yeah. also function in placental vasculature maintenance because the PEC-10 the trophoblast cells PEC-10 expressed, expressed localized between the fetal capillary capillary intracellular cells and maternal tissues in all types of the eucerium placenta. So uh, <coughs> in all placenta, placenta, PEG-10 has divisible role for uh, intracellular cell, cells and uh, one <coughs> have also a function to maintain the fetal capillary. So, <coughs> Okay, is that okay? Yeah, thank you very much. So, so first question is, uh, what do you think is the role of PEG-10 in non-placental mammals like marsupials? Mm, I don't know. That I don't know that function. Marsupials uh, have also. Um, Placenta like um, tissues uh, <clears throat> essential for uh, exchange, uh, exchange gas and gas and nutrient between uh, mother to uh, embryo. So I we think back then it's function in in that tissues and uh, <clears throat> in in our future plan. Uh, I <clears throat> why won't you generate much part knockout my uh, knockout? Okay, then the second question is uh, what possible angle could exist in the role of PEG 10, PEG 11 in immune tolerance in a pregnant mother? What pathway molecules might be affected? I don't, I don't have, have, yeah. have the answer for pathway or molecules, but uh, our hypothesis is that the peg-10 protease may induce uh, aggressiveness of trophoblast toward maternal immune cells in order to protect the fetal capillaries. Under such a situation, RTL1 would play a defensive role in the fetal capillary and cellular cells against a secondary attack by trophoblast cells. The trophoblast cells. Ah, okay. So, <clears throat> so the cooperation between PEG10 and RT1 would provide the essential architecture for the fetal maternal interface in the all type of type of eucerium placenta. I think. Uh, and uh, we are planning some ex experiment to verify our hypothesis. Okay, thank you very much. This is a very nice talk. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.